I think we'll be live in just a second. Yep. Great. Thank you so much. Again, very glad that you're in charge of technology and I am not. All right, here we are. Good morning, everybody. This is the time and place set for the Zoning Board of Adjustment for the City of Pittsburgh hearings on March 9th, 2023. And the first case of the morning is Zone K7 of 2023 for 45 Mount Oliver Street. The applicant is identified as Jeff Decker. Do we have Mr. Decker with us? There's Jeff Decker, okay. Could you unmute yourself and let us know that you're there? Mr. Decker? Hello? We're not hearing you, Mr. Decker, so I, I, I can see that you're on, but I can't hear you. Could Mr. Decker, I'm assuming you're trying alternative uh, ways of communicating with us, but um, he can also call if he can't get letters. I was going to say if you if you can't reach us, try to call in. There's a the number on the um, there's the webinar number on the um, agenda. I, I called De Mr. Decker earlier today and he said he might have some technical issues. Um, and he is in fact having technical yeah. issues. So I'm, I'm, Mr. Decker, if you're listening, I'm gonna read off the phone number and um, it might be a better way to log into the meeting. It is 1-301-715-8592. You can also give me a call and uh, I can help you out. He has your number, Daniel. He should. Um, I'll give it again. It's 503-569-0274. Uh, okay, Mr. Decker, if you're listening, please please call one of the numbers and try to connect with us because we'd like to hear your case, but we can't hear your case if we can't hear you. Okay. There's a phone number. All right. Now, of course, we have to unmute the phone number. Hello. There we go. I'm assuming that's Mr. Decker. Yes, it's Mr. Decker, Jeffrey Decker. Okay. Mr. Um, Decker. I got I'm my assuming... phone. I'm I'm talking to you through my phone and looking at you through my computer. Okay. I don't know how that works. But well, there's a little bit of a lag. Way. So okay. the first thing I'm going to do is to ask you if there's anybody else who's participating with you this morning. My grandson is sitting beside me. Okay. So if yeah. you if either of you are going to say anything, I'm going to ask you both to swear in. And if, okay. if 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 there are different speakers, I'm going to ask you to identify yourself before you speak. Okay. okay. So first, right. do you both swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. I do. Great. Thank you very much. And then I'm going to ask Mr. Shepke is going to read the case in, and then we'll ask you to explain what's going on. So, Sorry. Mr. Shepke, carry on. This is case seven of 2023 for 45 Mount Oliver Street. The application is for a pa parking pad, and they're requesting variances from 903.03.e.2, 
a five foot front setback is required and zero foot is requested and a five foot exterior side setback is required and zero foot is requested. Okay. So you sent in some materials and we're taking a look. Can, can have yes. you, first question is, is this something you're proposing to do or is this something that's already done? Well, um, the, the the that drawing I sent in a long time ago, and and that's not in proportion. Um, the two parking spots beside my building, where the arrow goes, is um, one has been there forever. Uh, I've owned the place for probably twenty so or so years, and um, the across the street there's. Um, a bunch of college kids that parking's gotten tough. So I Which, just thought if I took two cars out of the way uh, in my parking, that it would free up the street. But um, the, uh, like I say, that's not, I sent in more photographs. Um, the, there is five foot in front of it. There's a sidewalk. It goes all the way past my property, and and it also is um, well. It's up against my building, so um, I I just there there's been one parking spot there forever. So it gets, and, can I? I'm going to ask you to pause for a second here. Um, all I'm seeing is the site plan, which has a one story. That, okay, there we go. It was there we go. All right, we're we're now seeing the photograph of it. It's a one-story building. Is that how yes. is it? Is that used as a garage or how how is that? Yeah, it's building it's storage. Used? Storage, it's strictly it storage. Like, it looks like it's been there for a while. It's not um, obviously this is a residential district, but that's not a residential <laughs> use. Um, yes, that's correct. Okay. It's been there for uh, the beams inside there are are probably three feet high. It it looks like somebody told me at one point they used to pull three cars in there and the trolley or the tracks went up by the. It was a repair shop. I don't have any. I'm talking back in the 1900s. Okay. But, so it's it's a it's but, a um, pretty old and pretty substantial building. Well, let's let's talk yeah. about the parking spaces for a second here. Um, in the photograph, it looks like there's a trailer under cover and then just a a, a trailer mm -hmm. of some kind next to it. Is that where yes. um, the parking spaces are that you you'd like to y use? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, like I say, the the one. There, there's an aluminum roof there that um, has been there for over 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. And I always just back the trailer underneath it, that white trailer. And uh, Mr. Uh, Gabe, the inspector, said to me, shut that off, please. Uh, the inspector said to me, um, I, I've been done, I've got hearings. Um, the <laughs> They, I got a, a hearing for, um, anyway, I was down at, uh, Gene Riccardi's office and, and, um, they, they, um, um, <clears throat> and I lost my train of thought. Um, I, I got a $3,000 fine for, um, they said operating a business. When I went down there, they said it was for the parking pad, and uh, they excused it. And Gene Riccardi said to me, "Hey, get this straightened up and come down." Um, I, I, the there's no the curb, the sidewalk goes right out onto the street. There's no curb there at all, and and if you see that white car, there's no curb underneath it. There's there's no curb well, along any of that that building. Okay, I'm um, going to interrupt you so, for a moment. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Please. Decker. 
but you um there's not you you said that there's not actually a curb but um no. you've not had th the department of infrastructure and mobility mobility and infrastructure um it usually takes a look at curb cuts and approves them or not based on um where the curb cut is in relation to the intersections and turning radiuses and what's across the street and everything else so you don't mm -hmm. you don't have a an approved curb cut for either the parking spaces or um the existing building at this point um i'm not sure if i understand um uh, no i i don't have anything okay. like i say the building's been there for a hundred years i don't okay. not a hundred but um and and there's there's only two garage doors on there that you pull out and you know turning has never been the streets real wide there you know like i say normally people where that white car it whoop, uh where that white car is uh it looks like it's half on the curb you know but two cars parked side by side there's plenty of room it's a it's a wide street. Okay. You, are there other um, photographs that we should be taking a look at here? Um, there, there could be. I there said, we are. There, that's okay. yeah. That, now that's way up at the intersection. If you look on the left hand side, is that little white roof? Right. That's that canopy. All right. That's going. That's looking down the street. Okay. You know, my building's on the left. Um and um it, like I say it's it's not like it's a, a narrow Pittsburgh street. This okay. is a uh extremely wide for you know, there's you can park two cars on each side and you can go up and down the street um without a problem. So I guess I'm I'm seeing that um grass slope between the gray car and the the aluminum roof um, for the one parking pad um yeah would you are you intending to disturb that at all or are you main intending to maintain well, i can do i can do whatever okay. if the if the the little roof is a problem i can take it down and throw it away um if 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 there's too much wrong or too big of a pro i um i'm 70 years old and i'd, I'd like to make the place look good um and and um whatever um the it would be nice to leave that aluminum roof there and one car can go under it and the next car the next car can be beside it um or whatever i i'd like to do whatever makes you guys happy um and and uh like i say if it gets to be too much uh i we might just bail out of it and and i'll i'll plant my my son one day took a little tractor and graded the hillside down and it wasn't really graded he he uh took the weeds out some of the rocks out and it, it it's he didn't dig out you if you see the 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 property yeah no that's that, it, i i think we understand i i, I think yeah. we understand what what's going on and and what what the request is here but yeah. um it, so the 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 parcel with the green yeah. is that yours as well is that part of your parcel the parcel with the grass no Okay, no, but that's not it's not know. currently used for anything. It's a city property. It it's a uh, I tried to buy it 20 years ago and and cuz I wanted it to be all cut grass and all the way down to my building. Now people walk their dogs in there and needless to say what the dogs do in that patch of grass. I I'm not going to speculate. There. I just wanted to know who owned the property. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um I, I don't have any other questions. Um, are there there are two other pages I think of a presentation we'll just take a quick look at and then um, if Ms. Burton oh there we go that that helps to see. Um, 
Ms. Burton Falk or Mr. Richardson, do you have any other questions for the applicant? No additional questions, Madam Chair. No questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. That, I think I that think we understand what's that. Okay. Yeah, Go I ahead. think I'm we sorry. understand what's going on. I think it's helpful to see um how both spaces would sort of um like it seen the 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 different vehicles there help, but all right. Yeah. Um, it, is there anybody else on the line who would like to comment with respect to the application for Mount Oliver Street? If you if you want to participate, raise your hand. And I am not seeing any hands raised. So uh, thank you, Mr. Decker. And thank you for um, figuring out the technology to be with us this morning. And we will... Uh, <laughs> issue a decision as soon as we can. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to close this hearing yep. for the morning. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next case of the morning is zone case 293 of 2022 for 4118 Boehner Road. And the application is, uh, the applicant is Catherine Balzer. Do we have Ms. Balzer? We do. Could you unmute yourself, Ms. Balzer, so that we know that you're there? Oh, dear. Ms. Balzer? Yes. We, there you are. Okay, great. Thank you. Is there is there anybody else who's going to participate with you this morning? My husband is here with me. Okay, so I'm going to ask you both to swear in. Okay, And then I, I, if you were here for the first hearing, uh, Mr. Shepke will read the case in and then we'll, we'll ask you to explain what's going on. So do you both swear or affirm that the information that you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Shepke, please. This is case 293 of 2022 for 418 Beener Road. The application is for a front yard parking pad and they're requesting a variance from 912.04.L3. Parking pads must be set back five feet from the front of the primary structure, and a parking pad in the front yard is proposed. Okay, and we'll put your materials up. And again, I, I don't know if you heard the, the last case, but my question there was, um, is this something that's already in place, or is this something that you're proposing to install? Proposing. Okay. All right, so um, we see the site plan, but could you explain a little bit about your property and um, why it is that you're proposing? Is it two parking pads that you're proposing? Yes, two 10 by 19, because we have two vehicles. Um, okay. Is it a duplex or I, I'm no, just trying to single understand? Home. It's a single home, but my husband now has a handicap placard. Parking on the street is getting difficult. And this would make it a lot easier for him to access. We're both 70 years old. Although we have a garage in the rear of the home, the alley is, is not maintained enough um, to make it accessible. It's very narrow. Um, the driveway is very steep. And we are having a lot of issues with constant water and ice forming on the alley. And of course, since it's an alley, it's not maintained. Um, you know, immediately. That's like third in order um, to be taken care of. So um, it would make um, it easier for my husband to get in and out of the house because it's level with no steps. Well, why don't we why don't we go through the materials? I, I, you know your property better than we do, so it would help for us to understand what the conditions are here. Okay. Well, it. Uh, what are you asking? The conditions. So we're we're looking at the pictures that that you provided. So maybe you could. Are are okay. you watching the screen at the same time? I am, but I don't see. I could see all of you. I can't see anything other than, uh, uh, you know, three people on the screen. Nothing else is showing on my end of the computer. You should. Um, th there should be a gallery view, um, which. There, 
I, I, if you explain the picture that you're looking at, I could tell you that we sent you a picture of the front of the okay. house. We'll see a red sidewalk. We'd like to put a pad on either side of that sidewalk for each of our cars. Um, if you see the ice in the water, that are that is now the issues okay. that we're having with the alley in the back of the house. That is where the driveway is. All right. Um, now. Okay. But you can see that, you know, I have been, I have correspondence, if you'd like to see them, from the Maslow administration until present, asking for maintenance of the alley. Um, they recent, after 40 years, they did repave it a few years ago before COVID. But since that time, there is now an issue with water seepage. And when it's cold, the ice forms on. You could see that the other streets are dry. The driveway is dry, but the alley isn't. So the so alley- it just, I, I'm seeing the ice and I appreciate that concern. Although, I don't know, with the winter we've had, there, there are only so many days, but I, 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 I'm being facetious. But so we're seeing the slope of the ice with the, the slope of the alley with the ice. Mm -hmm. And there's a white structure at the rear of the photo. Is that who is that your house or where is your house in relation to that? We have the red brick house with the yard with all of the the stone, the steep drop. I wish I could see what you're referencing. Well, we're here. One second. Let me hit this. Oh, oh, there we go. That ice is oh, the white structure. That's my next door neighbor's garage. Okay. That's that's what I was just and so the the driveway in front of that white structure is our drawers. Okay. Yes. And you do have a garage at the rear, but your um your position is that that um because of the ice and the slope of the alley, it's not really well accessible. True. And you could also see there's only there's barely room enough to swing in in and out. Like if I pull in when I pull out, I have to swing back out. And it's the air the alley is barely wide enough for a car to get up there. Um, one of the city trucks actually had to be towed out when they were trying to. Uh, so um, can you can you walk us through, now that you can see the photos, could you um, walk us through, uh, because front yard parking isn't permitted in the city and where we appreciate your particular concerns, we're also mindful that front yard parking isn't permitted. So. Um, what what I want to understand is um, why why you think you need two parking spaces? Would one parking space address your concerns? Is there street parking? And one last question, so you can think about it: Are there other um, front yard parking spots in your immediate area? Uh, number one, there are several homes on our street that have front yard parking pads already. Okay. Especially next door. Number two, um, parking is starting to become difficult uh, because Airbnb. there's people are now renting rooms out in their houses, Airbnb. And in the last year, there are now three houses that have three or more people parking there. My husband has a handicap placker. He might have to park at the end of this the street to walk up. Um, in addition, because being a road is not a main road, it is not plowed or taken care of immediately when it snows. Um, I have fallen walking out to the street and broke my wrist trying to get into the car. We're both 70 years old. And since there are several houses on being a road who have driveways, you could see the driveway right next door to me to the left. She has a parking pad in the front. Two houses up has a parking pad. In the Would front. You, you let's let I was going to say we're going to go through the the photos a little bit. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Dan. If you, yeah, um, there's one right next door, right there. Okay. The orange brick house. Uh huh. But are there any that have the entire front yard um, used for parking? 
The entire front yard? Well, I mean, it it, it looked like if you have side by side spaces in front of your house, that it would pretty much take up the whole front yard. No. No, it's similar to what you see, what you see in, at the orange house, you know? Okay. Okay, Let, let's keep scrolling through the, the photos there. Okay. There's another one right there you just saw. Okay. And that's the alley. This is the alley. This is the street behind my house. Mm -hmm. okay. Now across the street, they added one right there. That used to be a single driveway. They, you know, that was done a while, a long time ago too. But those are houses that have, um, that oh, that's have in driveways, the not um, front yard parking without a, without a garage in the oh. front. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if I could, to the front yard. Yeah, if you could, and, and I apologize, but could you just identify yourself for the record, please? You identify yourself. I'm Don B Donald Balzer. I'm okay, Kathy thank Tuchman. you. We didn't we didn't have your first name, Mr. Balzer. Thank oh, you. Okay, sorry. Wait, what were you saying though? I I cut you off. No, I I heard your question about uh, taking up the entire front yard. The, the yard is forty foot wide, with the the three foot sidewalk and two 10 foot pads, it would be 23 feet. So there would be, I think uh, I have the dimensions on the uh, the drawing that we sent that would show yep. one side that would have nine foot of yard, the other side would be about six. Okay, all right. Um, are there, and there's several other photographs or, um, items in your um, in the packet that you sent us. So I want to make sure that we take a look at those as well. That's the more of the ice in the rear. Yeah, and you could see the other streets. There's nothing on the streets. It's if it gets a little bit cold, um, it forms ice. So although we have a driveway, it really is not accessible all the time. And when it is, it's very narrow. And um, I have been contacting this issue with the city and with Allegheny County for at least two and a half years. And that's it. Um, is that another? Um, I'm looking at the ice on the alley, but is that another residential street behind you? I mean, where yes, the white that's Dealey. If you're talking where the white van is parked on mm -hmm. um, down below, that's Dealey. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. And Daniel, could you just uh, scroll through the other photos as well? There's there the- You could see when, when it's not cold, it's seeping water. Uh-huh. Which is, which is ice when it's cold, okay. Right. And I, no one's been able to figure out what's going on. It's just insane. Okay. Okay. We appreciate that. All right, and th this is the, those are the plans for the house, I guess. Yeah, they're they're the original blueprints of the property lines that you might need. Got it. Okay. Uh, I think I understand what the request is and the context of it. Um, thank you for answering all of our questions, um, Ms. Burton Falk or Mr. Richardson. Any any additional questions? No additional questions, Madam Chair. I, I've no thought question. of one more for the Balsers. Um, have, is this something that you've discussed? I mean, when the when you posted the sign in front of your house, is this something that you discussed with your immediate neighbors? Yes, they were all aware, and they said they received a notice that there would be a hearing today. They they all know about it. Okay. All right. Um, I'm not seeing any hands raised um, with a request to participate. So um, we are going to look at your photographs again and consider your request and we will issue a decision as soon as we can. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, thank you Have for being day. here this morning. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the next case of the morning is uh, zone case 297 of 2022 for 51 or 7151. 
Mary Beck Bond Place. And the applicant is identified as Francis Carrick. Do we have Francis Carrick? Or so somebody here on behalf of the applicant for uh, Mary Beck Bond Place? There's Carrick Signs. All right. Um, Carrick Signs is currently mute, muted. So could somebody identify yourself for the for the record, please? Carrick signs, we're not hearing you. So could you could you speak up? I see your hand raised, but now I'm seeing you, but we can't hear you. Could you check your microphone, maybe? Nope, not hearing you. We've, we've asked somebody to, it, would it be possible to call in if you can't get your mic working? Uh, we're all sympathetic about technological issues, I swear, but... Um, the meeting as an attendee and will be muted throughout the meeting. meeting. All right. Um, I'm seeing Jennifer DiNardo has her hand raised. Ms. DiNardo, are you here for this application? Now, Ms. DiNardo, you have to unmute yourself. <laughs> there we go. Yes, good morning. Thank you for unmuting me. <laughs> I, I didn't uh, yes, do it. I, I am... Um, representing the owner, um, Redo 1625, which is um, located at 7151 Mary Peck Bond Place. And I do have, um, Phil Broad is here with me as well, I believe. You will see him in the audience and Alex or Francis Carrick from Carrick Signs associated with this case. Okay, well, we're, we're trying to get um, Mr. Carrick on. And um, we have you, who, who is the other person you identified? Uh, Philip Broadus. Okay, got, all right. We mm -hmm. have Mr. Broadus is admitted as well. So um, I'm gonna suggest to Mr. Carrick that um, if, you, if you try to call in, uh, we'll look for your, your phone. Okay, there you go. Um, but in the meantime, if Ms. DiNardo and Mr. Broadus can um, swear in, we'll get started with the case. And I'm just gonna ask you both if you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Shepke, could you read the case in please while we're waiting for Mr. Carrick to join us? Uh, this is case 297 of 2022 for 7151 Mary Peck Bond Place. The application is to install a ground-mounted sign, and they're requesting a variance from 919.03.m.3. 50 square foot maximum ground sign area is allowed, and 75 square feet is requested. Okay, so we have um, some materials that were sent in um, for this case. Can you explain what it what it is that you're proposing to do and what the signs for? Okay, um, so we recently completed the renovation of the former Lemington home uh, nursing and, home. And Ms. Donardo, I apologize, but could you just identify your role uh, with the project yeah. or with the owner? Yes, I um, I was the development director for Redo 1625, the owner. And what is what is that? I mean, I'm I'm just seeing a building on a site plan. So yeah, okay. So we um that is the former Lemington Home nursing home for the aged. Okay. And, yes, and um so we recently completed the renovation of that building. Um, we does it, have, does it remain an, an assisted living or skilled no, nursing it, facility? It was con converted to fifty four. Uh, independent living elderly apartments, 
on the second through the fourth floor of that building. And then the first floor was renovated to accommodate a commercial tenant who is the East Liberty Family Healthcare Center. Okay, so it, it, there, it's sort of a shared use with um, independent living and then the, a medical center on the first floor. That is correct. And the, the, the exterior, uh, or the, the configuration of the property in terms of the building and the parking spaces hasn't changed, but the question is about signage at the entrance. That's the only thing that the board is reviewing is the proposed sign at the entrance. That is correct. Okay. So the, the specific variance that is being requested is for a sign um, that would be 75 square feet in size where only 50 feet, a uh, 50 square feet is permitted. Could Correct. you um, give us some context about the proposed location of the sign and why yes. um, you think that the, because the, the sign is, you know, half again, um, as large as it's supposed to be. So if you give us yeah. a, a little bit of a context of that, we appreciate okay. it. So I, I do want to um, also note that um, further to your, um, your left on the site plan is a, um, a I'm getting a little bit of an echo here, um, a, an adjacent uh, property that has 81. Here it is. <clears throat> oh my God! Sorry, I'm not sure why I'm getting a um. Amazing. Oh, I didn't get my camera off. There you go. Okay, so so there's an adjacent property that contains 81 elderly apartments as well. Okay, so it's a combined use. Um, no, they're separately owned. Okay. Yeah. But we, we are including them on the site signage, right, at the street so people know that the Eva P. Mitchell Apartments is up this particular drive. And I'm, I'm thinking that um, somebody is going to have to mute, and I'm not sure if it's the phone number or Mr. Carrick, but that's where the echo is coming from. Okay. I am muted. Well, I was muted. My my video is muted. Oh, now we've okay. So, but just mute while Ms. Donardo is speaking, and then come back to us. How's that? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. So, Donardo. Uh, so the um, the sign, you know, it contains three entities um and so it, it needs to be larger to accommodate all three and en uh, entities with their name and their phone number um so the lettering for the sign that met the 50 square foot standard um the lettering was too small to be um legible as at the street as you're driving by I tell you what, so do we have a, I, I, and again, you know your property better than we do. Could you show us the proposed location for the sign so we understand that context? Okay, and, that, that is shown and, and here. I'm, ass, mm -hmm. I'm assuming there's a, okay, so we've got all sorts of different things that we need that you're proposing to include on the sign. And you're you're saying that, um, they're, they're the separate uses that need to be identified at the entrance, which serves both your uses and the adjacent one. Correct. Okay. Think, but so that's what the proposed sign would look like. How about where's it going to go? Okay, we do. Have, oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. So we have a side by side mock up of the the um, a sign that would meet the fifty square foot requirement in one showing the 70 square foot on the left. And so as you can there, see. Mm -hmm. Would that, would the existing Eva P. Mitchell sign be removed or yes. is that proposed to remain in place? 
no, both of those coming soon and the Eva. And the well, East I had Liberty. to assume that coming yeah. soon was going to go, but the Eva P. Correct. Mitchell would also go because that would yes, be on the new sign. All right. And um, do you know how long um, the the pink sign, the Eva P. Mitchell sign, how long had that been in place? That has probably been there since they built that in 1980 something. Okay. All right. So, so all right. Okay. And it, it seems to me that the, um, just with the hillside and the context of the entryway, um, this is your only chance to really see where the driveway is. Is that correct? Yes, it is correct. Okay. And that's the, um, and, and again, you said that the, the size of the lettering was intended to, so that all those three distinct uses are identifiable and legible, at least for, from a certain distance. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, and there are two other um, items in the in the slot. Oh, that's just the, the post-it notice. Okay. All right. We we appreciate having those as well. I'm going to uh, because Mr. Carrick has done a very good job in in getting himself on. Um, I'm I'm assuming that you consulted with the sign company about the legibility of sign and letters. And I'm just, I was just going to ask Mr. Carrick to confirm that um, the the size of lettering was selected so that it would be legible at a certain distance. But we've lost Mr. Is that correct, Mr. Carrick? That is correct. Okay. And this is the, the, um, the smallest uh, that it could be and still be legible for all three of those uses? Correct. Okay. All right. Is this, um, was this reviewed with any of the community organizations or any neighbors of the property? Yes, it was. Okay. Thank <clears throat> you. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Burton Falk or Mr. Richardson, any questions for the applicant? No additional questions, Madam Chair. Okay. No questions. Thank you. And I'm seeing uh, Ms. DiNardo has her hand raised, but I'm not seeing any other hand ra hands raised seeking to participate in this matter. So thank you. Thank you for overcoming technological difficulties. We all appreciate that. And thank you all for being here this morning. But we'll, we will close the record in this matter and review the exhibits and we will issue a decision as soon as we can. Very good. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, the next case of the morning is the own case six of 2023 for 2815 Penn Avenue. The applicant is identified as Nicholas Miller. Present. Hello, Mr. Miller. Hello. Are there others who are going to be participating with you this morning? Uh, yes, Mr. Ryan Wodis and Mr. Rob Mullen. Okay, we will get everybody here who needs to be here. All right. Um, if everybody who would like to participate could unmute so that we can get you sworn in. Uh, do each of you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Thank you all. Um, Mr. Shepke, could you read the case in, please? This is uh, Zone Case 6 of 2023 for 2815 Penn Avenue. The application is for off-site parking, which requires a special exception pursuant to 914.07.G.2. So good morning, Madam okay. Chair, um, members of the board, Ryan Wotus here on behalf of the applicant. Um, I think I'll probably try to run through the presentation efficiently if we can. And uh, to the extent we have questions, uh, you know, we do have Nick Miller and, and Rob Mullen. Uh, as well. Okay. So uh, it, it is a, a request for a special exception for offsite parking. So I guess I, I understand what the criteria are, and I'm sure you're going to explain how it 
what what you're proposing complies, but how many parking spaces are we looking at and for what? So we are, well, let's, I'll, I'll get to that once, let's just roll through this quickly, I guess. So posted notice, uh, this is on the front of the building located at 2815 Penn Avenue. Uh, next slide, please. So what we're showing here is this, what's indicated as the site, that is the property at 2908 Smallman Street. Uh, that is currently consists of 28 uh, residential units, and there's a gym on the first floor uh, of that um, of that building. That I used, suspect this is something that we've seen previously, and there was parking somewhere you, else. You have correct. So there's with that use, there's 15 uh, off street parking stalls that are required under the zoning ordinance within the RIV district. That parking, uh, we are recently before the board uh, for the 2908 pro property. The off-site parking uh, was, was historically maintained at 2926 Smallman, which was the adjacent parcel. Um, as we discussed at that prior hearing, the 2926 uh, is to be developed. And as a result of that, that parking uh, location will be going away. Um, so in the interim, we are proposing to move the uh, 15 parking stalls to 2815 Penn Avenue to go ahead and meet our requirements for off-street parking. Um, the, again, the, the uh, portion identified as parking site, that is the 2815 uh, Penn Avenue uh, location. Uh, for purposes of the special exception, we included obviously this exhibit, which not only identifies the location of the site and the parking site, but this also shows that both parcels are in the RIV IMU, which meets the zoning classification requirement uh, of the special exception. Next slide, please. So what we've included here, maybe a little difficult to see, but this is a site plan for 2815 Penn Avenue. Uh, this is a four-story building uh, that is comprised of 19 uh, residential units, and there's approximately 7,800 feet of uh, what's currently de de designated as office space on sort of the first floor of the property. To the rear of the site is uh, Mulberry Way, which is the upper portion of that image. There is currently four surface uh, stalls on that site, two of which are ADA compliant. And then to the right of the, uh, the, to the right of the surface stalls, you see sort of what looks like two boxes. Those are parking carousels, uh, one of which is, is currently on the site, the other is uh, to be constructed or is currently under construction. Um, each of those consists of 16 cars on each carousel. So for a total amount of parking on the site is 36 stalls in total. For the use of 2815, um, between the residential and the office, there is only a requirement for uh, 16 off-street parking stalls. So in doing the math, obviously we're well in excess and have basically 20 stalls in excess of what's needed to operate the use at 2815. Again, we're proposing to use 15 of those for off-street parking for the 2908 uh, property. Okay. You understand that better than I do, Mr. Uh, Lotus. I, 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 I ran I, through the math quickly, but at the end of the day, there's 20 excess stalls here. We're proposing to use 15 and the you know, there will be sufficient stalls still available for the 2815 use. Okay. So, and, and does that assume, I? you said that the one parking carousel is in place and another is being constructed, but it's assuming the full parking plan has been implemented, you will have excess spaces when it's completed. Is that what you're saying? That is correct. That's correct. <clears throat> Next slide, please. And then we've also included uh, a diagram showing the distance from the primary entrance to the 2908 Smallman Street uh, project to the parking carousel or parking lot located, again, at the lower part of the image at 2815, showing that it's a, a distance of approximately 740 feet, uh, which again, complies with the 1,000 foot requirements set forth in the zoning ordinance. Next slide, please. And we've also included uh, a letter of support or let, not actually a letter of support, a letter indicating that those stalls uh, are available for the use of 2908's tenants. Uh, again, 15 stalls will be provided. And at the end of the day, 
uh, assuming this proposal is approved by the, the board, there will actually be an easement recorded uh, in the you know, Department of Court or Department of uh, Real Estate, evidencing the right of 2908 to use those 15 stalls. It, how is that communicated to the tenants? Just out of curiosity. So, the, the, Rob, you want to introduce yourself? And you can yeah, explain. sure. Certain. Thank, Madam Chair. Thank you for the question, Robert Mullen. I'm the developer and uh, um, that has uh, and uh, general partner for um, each of the respective properties. Um, the the um, there's two there's two phases of that communication that have already taken place um, at the initial um, uh, approval um, of the uh, temporary zoning whenever the uh, tenants were marketed uh, their leases we explained to them that uh, uh, while the surface lot was available it would be used for the um, uh, for, for the purposes of their, of their parking needs uh, and then with the understanding that uh, upon development that the parking would be moving to 2815 Penn Avenue most likely. Um, that sequence plan was also run through, authorized, and endorsed by the um, strip district neighbors in our overall um, number of um, times we come before you with the use and implementation of the carousels. And it's part of the reason why we have it parking in excess of the um, the 16 spots that Mr. Wood has referenced um, at 2815. So it's been an integrated communication process since inception um, as we go through this three-phase development of, of the areas where we have um, properties under development in the strip district. All right. Um, I don't have any other questions. So, uh, Ms. Burton Falk or Mr. Richardson, no, any, any questions? Except no, you get to ride on the carousel. I don't. I, I'm not sure. We're hosting. Works. We're happy to host tours. They're, the the first one's up and running, and the second one is in a warehouse a block away, ready for installation. Okay. Everyone's been very sad since Kenny Wood got rid of theirs. So you know, we're happy to fill the void. <laughs> I don't know. I understand there's a Ferris wheel that's going to the north side. That might be the same, <laughs> same idea. Yeah, I don't know, but maybe we'll see that in the near future. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, are there, if there are no questions from Mr. Richardson or Ms. Burton Falk, are there, is there anybody else on the line who would like to participate with respect to this application? And I am seeing no hands raised, so we will uh, close the record, consider your um, the materials that you have presented, and issue our decision forthwith. Great. Thank you very All much right. for your time. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you this morning. All right. The next case of the morning, which is the last case of the morning is uh, zone case nine of 2023 for 3127 Liberty Avenue. The applicant is identified as Kevin Kordak. Mr. Kordak, are you with us? I am, Madam Chair. There you are. All right. Um, are there others participating with you this morning? Yes, our developer, Johnny Miller, is on the line. OK. Um, I'm going to ask you both to swear in. So do each of you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board this morning will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And, and I would ask Madam if Chair, you... Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I need to recuse on this one. Please, please do so and join us when we're finished. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Um, and um, just... If Mr. Miller and Mr. Kordak, as you're speaking, if you could identify yourself with the court reporter, that would be helpful. And Mr. Shepke, could you read the case in, please? This is case nine of 2023 for 3127 Liberty Avenue. The application is for the new construction of a five-story multi-unit residence. They're requesting a special exception from 904.07.c.5. Addition, additional height over four stories is a special exception in the UI and a variance from 904.07.c, a minimum 10 foot side setback is required and 2.6 feet and 3.5 feet are requested. Okay, so whoever's starting, um, we'll put your materials up and if you could explain, I, I, I appreciate that um, an additional story is permitted as a special exception, but when you're also requesting significant um, side yard setbacks, the impact of that 
um, fifth story is more significant. So um, I think we have to consider them in combination. Um, and I, I will I will say that is of a concern to me. So um, carry on. Absolutely. Uh, so this is just the first introduction slide. And Madam Chair, I do want to bring up uh, just as and who a is this speaking? I'm Kevin sorry. Kordick, I'm sorry. Kevin Thank Kordick's you. Project if you could slow, slow down just a little bit. Carry on. OK. All right. Um, just as a point of reference, we've been at this um, and I know this is not relevant to this case, really, in a sense. But since February 21st of 2021, trying to get this approved through zoning and these two you know, this is our second go round for um, variances, and I just want to make it aware that we've had 18 submissions through zoning, and this is just being brought up now. So, I, again, it, it's a little bit of a sore in my side because it's it hasn't been noticed through all these until this point in time. So, wait, wait, it, and I, I mean, we're we're here on a zoning case. I'm not I sure know. that I know what you mean by. Um... What, what has just been identified at this time? Because the setbacks are the setbacks and the height is the height. So mm -hmm. how, how would you not be aware that those were variances that were to be requested? They, <laughs> Daniel, if you go to the next slide, I'll explain, please. Okay. Um, next slide, sorry. <laughs> so in the latest, um, ZBA, well, not ZBA, zoning review. The ZBA request here, <clears throat> as you can see, um, is what you guys mentioned for both of those exceptions. Uh, Daniel, next slide. The exceptions <clears throat> to the setbacks are slightly skewed from what you have noted. We are proposing 3.07 on each side, not the two differentials that you have noted. Yeah, but the um, ten feet is required on both sides, so you're you're still requesting side yard correct. setbacks. Now, as you can see from um, 90407C in the UI, we are allowed to use contextual setbacks, and that's why this variance wasn't applied for originally. The original structure was built lot line to lot line. And Daniel, if you go to the next slide, please. As you can see from this picture, the the blue structure in the middle along the front is the structure that we're demolishing, and it is built lot line to lot line. And on the but right side, demolish picture, it. Don't you lose the? Um, I mean, it, it technically, uh, you lose the context if you're demolishing it. I, you're not building on top of it. Correct. But as you can okay. see, the adjacent structures to the left and right of it, and up and down the entire block, are lot line to lot line. That's why we did not apply for this originally. We assumed we could use contextual setbacks. Ah, uh, the power of assumptions. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, okay. and again, I, I, it's not an assumption. It's every other building next to it's a lot line to lot line. It's, well, it's I, again, I, I, it, it, you said you assumed, but the, the, the planning department viewed it differently, but let's, let's carry on. Okay, next slide, please. And again, this is just another view. Um, the one on the left is again, all the uh, adjacent structures, they are lot line to lot line. The right side as you're looking at it <clears throat> is directly across from us, which is being constructed Brewer's Block, which I'm sure you all are aware of, and the um, size of the, uh, I think, I believe that one's six stories. Um, and again, if you go to the next slide, Daniel, just another view showing lot line to lot line of the structures adjacent to us. Next slide. What is the tallest structure in that stretch? In that stretch across, it would be across the street. It's Brewer's Block, six stories. Yeah, I, I asked on that stretch of that side of the street. I am unaware, Madam Chair. I can get that information for you, though. Okay. Is it and fair to say see, that the, the, a, a proposed five-story building would be higher than what would be um, than, than any of the other structures on that side of the street? Uh, again, I, I don't know that off the top of my head. I will look into that. Okay. But I do want to bring up that it, it is five stories for a reason. The, the, it's actually four stories livable. The, the fifth story, the lowest level is parking. So we meet all the city's requirements for parking, off street parking. I just want to make that point valid as to why it's mm -hmm. five stories. Okay, C carry on, sorry. That's all right. And as you can see here <clears throat> from our first uh, variance hearing, item number three, 
that you guys have noted, and it has been this way from day one, the applicant proposes to demolish the existing one-story warehouse structure on the subject and to construct a new five-story structure. Again, I, I'm not saying that we were right or you guys were wrong or anything like that, but it has always been designed as a five-story structure. And I'm not sure how that got missed. Um, it might have been our fault. That's, you know, possible. But, you know, in, in the first variance, it was applied for as a five-story structure. But did, again, there's a, and this goes back to my original question, a five-story structure is would be permitted as a special exception in the UI district subject to the criteria for that. But um, the with this, uh, with the original approval, there was no request for a variance from the side yard setbacks. So uh, we, we were only reviewing what we were asked to review, which was the five-story building. With in that 2022 iteration, did it identify 10 foot setbacks with a five story building? No, it, it was always 3.07 on both sides. The design, honestly, Madam Chair, the design has not changed one bit from day one, other than the interior layout and the um, CDAP requirements for the exterior facade. The footprint has not changed. Okay. Next slide, please. And again, this is just reference to Brewer, Brewer Block, <laughs> Brewer's Block right across the street from us being a six story. And again, I know a lot of that structure is lot line to lot line as well. Next slide. As you can see, our proposed structure going on this lot, um, we do provide the 3.07 setback on both sides for a multitude of reasons. One obviously being egress, out of the structure on the sides and also just helping the the entire block not being lot line to lot line and up against an existing structure. Next slide. There's another view of it with the offsets. And next slide. That's it. Um, I do want to bring up one other point of reference, Mulberry Lofts, which again, I know it's not on our side of the street, it's directly behind us, is another five-story structure, um, you know, adjacent to us. And uh, I'm assuming, just because I'm looking at the uh, regulations for the um, UI district, mm -hmm. the um, floor area ratio um, is not to exceed a 10 to 1. I'm assuming if you have a, a five-story building, even if you're extending to the side yards, you're not going to exceed it. Uh, 10 to 1 far? Correct. We have that on our zoning, uh, our previous zoning. Uh, that was one of the questions. We do not exceed it. Okay. Okay. Johnny, uh, do you have anything you want to chime in on? That I might have missed? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, this is Johnny Miller. Um, I just wanted to reiterate uh, just briefly, one, thanks for your time. Um, just to clarify that the Variances that were identified were identified by the zoning administration. Uh, we're obviously here to make sure that everything is complete and that we're fully permitted and compliant. But I did want to clarify that for the record. Um, it wasn't something that we submitted. We have worked diligently with every department of the city uh, from CDAP to DOMI to planning to zoning uh, on this project for, as Kevin has identified, two years at this point. Um, but we did not identify those uh, variances. They were identified by the zoning administration. Um, again, I would also just reiterate that the reason that we're asking for a special exception is because the largely minus uh, entry space uh, for pedestrians, which we've again worked with CDAP to make sure that it, it meets uh, their expectations and their design criteria uh, that first floor is being utilized for parking uh, in its entirety. It's completely compliant with every parking um, requirement of the city uh, for planning, zoning, and DOMI. Um, and uh, as Kevin has also identified, just to clarify, um, a, a, the reason that this property is seeking these um, 
side yard easements uh, is because it's partially driven by the ability to pull in and out. Uh, we're restricted by the uh, by Domi uh, to have access uh, for vehicular traffic onto Liberty Avenue, which makes sense to us and we agree with that. So um, all that traffic has to be driven um, through the alleyway behind. Uh, again, that's been reviewed as compliant, uh, but the, the width of that building is, is a necessity to actually allow proper egress and ingress uh, and also safe egress and ingress into the property. Uh, so I, those are the points that I let, wanted to clarify. I'm happy to answer any other questions as well. Though. Well, let, let's just be clear. They're not easements. They're variances that you're requesting. But and we, I apologize. We I apologize yeah. for. Yeah, no, yes, no worries. I, Sorry, I just want the, the record to be clear. It's not. Yes, ma'am. OK, I agree. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Ms. Burtonfalk, any any questions for this applicant? No additional questions, Madam Chair. Okay. And was this something that uh, has neighbors in the strip been um, involved with this project um, in any of its various um, iterations? I'm not aware, Madam Chair, of any community meetings. We have worked, as I mentioned, with CDAP and planning and zoning and uh, we have not been referred okay. or recommended to seek that at this time. I think largely based on the fact okay. that that section of Liberty is undeveloped. That I I was just curious. So yes, Lawrenceville yep. might want to claim jurisdiction over it for all I know. But all right. <laughs> um, there are no other attendees here. And so we will accept your exhibits as part of the record and we will issue our decision. Thank you for explaining what's going on here. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, we're going to close for the day. Thank you all for being here.